Okay, so we're recording, so I'm going to go ahead and get started. Welcome, everybody. Thanks for taking the time to to join me for another one of these brief uh, Teams talks. We're gonna, I'm going to try to do these each Wednesday throughout the semester. I've got a, a whole slew of topics to cover, but the idea is just that we can do really short, um, targeted sessions on how to use some library resources and what everybody has access to. Can everyone see my screen where it says Liberty University College of Osteopathic Medicine Research Guide? Yep. Yes, sir. Okay. So, um, just in case you're not aware of it, if you go to the Lucom Library page, which is off of the the main Lucom site, it's just liberty.edu/lucom. You can actually do slash library, and it'll take you right here. And down these drop-down menus, this is really mostly an informational page, but under the the drop-downs for databases, underneath A to Z medical databases, you'll see research guides, and that's that's what we call it for everybody. This product is actually really known in libraries as LibGuides, but we call it research guide just because nobody outside of libraries knows what LibGuides means. So, but we built this with the idea that we can organize all of our electronic resources so that they're as easy as possible to find with the fewest number of clicks. Um, something I've done is built course guides that I wanna show you for, for different um, class years and semesters and courses, but I'm really just gonna be showing what all is available here in this, in this research guide that we've built. So, some of the things you'll see might be a little redundant just because I want them to be available. Like I said, it, as easy as possible. It, um, you can find it with the fewest amount of clicks as possible to find what you're looking for. We embedded this search summon bar here, and that's what the university uses as our front facing like kind of online catalog. If you're searching to see what we have and you can actually search just books or just articles and actually just so you'll know um, that same search box is here on the on the main Lucom library page. And actually, I don't know if you guys should be able to see this. If I go to the main um, Jerry Falwell library page, again, there's a box there. This is the same thing. This box and this box and this box are all the same thing. There are some in search box and you can find anything and everything in all the university holdings. Something kind of unique about the search summon box in our LibGuides, our research guide, is that it's it's filtered to, to look for Lucom content first. So that's a little different. I built links to A to Z databases. If you look up here at the top of the research guide, you'll see these tabs. Um, and we have a A to Z database list, and this is everything we have. It's going to you're going to find databases, ebook collections. They're all just alphabetical. So if you're curious about whether or not we have something, this would be the place where you could check to see because they're alphabetically listed to see if we carry that or not. Um, and actually, I want to point out too that I've linked to that on the under databases on the Lucom library page as well. So that that A to Z medical databases link takes you to this in the research guide and you'll see the search summon box is still above it. Um, something I want to talk about to make sure everyone's aware of is we built, I built course guides by class year, semester and course. And what I've tried to do is put links to resources that might be useful for that course, as well as we have, um, I built tables with the required textbooks that we have either as eBooks or in the physical collection. Most of the required textbooks that the students are required to use we have as ebooks. I can't say 100% of them, but most of them. So I've put like you'll you'll see here by class year. So this is OMS one fall semester, and then I've got there's different tabs for each of the different courses. So we have BFOM, OMM, PCM, Humana, HME, um, IMSK, and CVRH. And so we're looking at the BFOM tab now. And so these databases could be useful for students in those courses. Access Medicine, Clinical Key. Tima Med 1 and Visible Body, and then I've got tables with their required text, and you'll see there's links over here that go directly to those books in whatever collection they're in. Um, so they don't have to memorize whether a book was in a McGraw Hill and Access Medicine or an Elsevier and uh, Clinical Key or whether it's a Ovid publication that's in the LWW Health Library. These links just go directly to those texts in whatever collection they're in. Rob, and, I'd like to stop you for a second. Yeah, sure. I'm lost. I don't know how you got to this page. I'm okay. sorry. I'm, try, I'm trying to follow along and I, I don't know. I have no idea how you got to this. Sure. So page. If, you go, if you go to the Lucom library page. All right. So I'm at the Lucom library page. And if you scroll down, you'll see those drop downs. You'll see one that says databases. Yep. So you click on that and research guides is the second gotcha. link. 
that teach gotcha. you. All right, thank okay. you. Sure. <laughs> and then the, the course guides that I'm showing you, you can actually find these a couple different ways. There are tabs across here, and I want to show you too that each of these tabs, each of these classes for the class year and semester have a different section for each course. So as you click on these, they're responsive and they change, and you'll see databases that can be useful for that course and then links to any required textbooks that we have access to. So there's tabs up here for OMS 1 course guides. So we have fall and spring. Same thing for our, our OMS 2 class. We have uh, fall and spring semesters and all the courses for each of those classes and semesters and links to required textbooks and databases that could be useful. I've combined the third and fourth year together because they tend to use the same resources. Um, a lot of these are in our Ovid, our LWW Health Library, but still for all the courses that students are going to be going through in third and fourth year, underserved pediatrics, internal medicine, and so on, these are all responsive and have different uh, links to different resources that are useful for those. When I first came to the research guide, like Dr. Pelletier was asking about, when you, when you click on that link, for research guides and you first are taken to this to this research guide so that here's the a to z databases and the course guides i was showing you i also have links here for the same this will take you to those same course guides for oms1 oms2 and three and four again it's just i'm trying to make it as few clicks as possible um, students and faculty or whoever's using this can find exactly what they're looking for um, i've put some quick links over here again these are kind of redundant there's an a to z database which takes you to that, that listing I was showing you here that also this tab up here goes to, the A to Z databases. I've also put a link to Interlibrary Loan. Um, we have access to a ton of full text articles, but if for whatever chance you find an article that we don't have immediate electronic access to, this links to the ILL form. The university uses something called Iliad, and you can create an account. I'm happy to do that for you. You can do it yourself, whatever you want. Um, and again, it's kind of redundant because uh, on the main medical library page under uh, Jerry Falwell Library Resources. I've got a link to that interlibrary loan as well. So it's kind of a kind of a redundant access, but I wanted to be sure it was easy as possible to find. Uh, I've put links to journal search. So if you're not sure if we have a particular journal, this will let you search for the holdings that we have throughout the whole university. And again, we have access to things specifically through Lucom, but we share our access with the JFL, so we get access to their stuff as well. I've put links to RefWorks and Zotero. If you're doing any kind of research and you need a citation manager, the university formally um, purchases access to RefWorks, so you have access to that. We also have, I also put links to a free citation manager that I just personally like, and I, I think it's user friendly called Zotero. So that might be um, something you were interested in if you're doing any research. I also put a link directly to, it's kind of topical, but the National Institutes of Health has a, has a site built just for COVID-19 research. And so I've put links, a link to that there. Um, I mentioned that I'm gonna be recording, I'm recording this um, and I host, I put those videos onto a YouTube channel that I built for the medical library. And I've got links to all of these videos. These are ones we did last spring. Some of them I'm going to redo this year just to maybe update them with updated videos. Some of them will be new topics. But once we're finished here today, I'm going to save that video, upload it to our YouTube channel and link here. So you'll be able to access it again. A um, couple more minutes. We have access to, we have put links here to featured resources. These are just some of the most popular resources. So if you didn't want to have to go digging through the A to Z databases to find a specific database that we use a lot, um, I've got links to the, some of the most popular ones here. Access Medicine, Clinical Key, Journals at Ovid is a big one. Um, our preceptors love up to date and visible bodies good for anatomy, but these are just popular databases. Um, I subscribed to an RSS feed from PubMed for trending articles and put them here. So this will actually be responsive as new articles start trending in PubMed, these titles will change. Um, and you can link to the website or you can, if you use your own um, feed aggregator, something in your browser or something on your computer, you can actually add that feed to your own aggregator if you use something else. I have a carousel here of kind of recommended reading. I'll try to update this as we go along and just some of the most, I mean, it's it's really, again, just kind of a redundant way to find something. There's there's links, each of these images links directly to those books. Um, Dr. Pelletier, there's Emery's, you know, and I mean, it's, um, and these will take you to those books in the whatever collection they're in. And one of the last things that we've added is a, 
a Merck manual search widget. I thought this was kind of neat. My mom was a RN growing up. We always had a Merck manual in our home library, but they actually have a search widget that has consumer and professional information. So this could be a possible point of care clinical reference tool for our clinical faculty or if just students want to use it or faculty want to use it. You can actually search uh, the Merck manual directly from this widget and you can search professional um, professional information versus versus like a patient um, information for consumer. And then, of course, I have our library hours here. They're the same all throughout the week, but just so that students and faculty are aware. And then I put a link to this Lucom library email address down here. And actually, all three of us in the library, so Diane Garber, Kim Sandage, and myself, we all have access to this email address. So if you're not sure, have a question, or want to reach all of us at once, you can actually email that Lucom library at liberty.edu. So that's just kind of a quick uh, basic once over. Oh, one last thing I wanted to show if you're ever interested in medical apps that we have access to. Um, I built a tab here for mobile medical apps and I put links directly to those apps depending on your device, whether it's Apple or Android. I'm not even sure if they still make Windows phones, but I didn't I didn't put anything there for that. Um, and then I also subscribe to an RSS feed from a kind of a well known website called iMedical Apps where there's different um, reviews and things of different kinds of medical apps that clinical practitioners might might have use of. So thank you guys for for joining me for taking this time. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and stop the stop the recording. Thank you, Rob. This is great. Thank you guys for, for your time and. Um, um, and, and as always, if we have any questions, please feel free to give me a call or send us an email.